Welcome back, everybody, to the Weekly WP Roundup with BJ Keaton. That is me, and every Friday afternoon, we go live and talk about the best news and tutorials and resources that were published this week about WordPress. We try to make this a really interactive show, and as you can probably see in the live chat already, we're getting some comments and uh, questions, so let's make sure that we keep, uh, keep them coming, keep the show rolling, and uh, just get to know each other. So feel free to throw any kind of comments or questions that you may have in there uh, just makes everything just so much more wonderful and uh, and better. Uh, thank you for taking the time to to sit down with us. And if this is your first time in, uh, make sure that you uh, look at the description of this video. All of the links that I talk about during this uh, this show will be in the description. And there will be a lot more than uh, it's possible for me to get to, uh, provided there is many uh, many comments that uh, they, as there as many comments as there usually are. So uh, I might as well get to the comments <laughs> since uh, since I said there were a lot more coming in as usual. Um, Daryl, yes, I figured out what was wrong with the uh, with the stuff last week. Uh, apparently, I was well over the character limit on YouTube and had uh, had not gotten the description to save. I had too much good stuff for you guys, and YouTube held it back from you. So I apologize about that last week, uh, but I. Let me get that a little closer just to be a little bit louder. Uh, I apologize for that, but they are here this week. I made sure of that, and um, I'm glad, Judy, that uh, that I can uh, help a little bit past the time when you're on hold. It is uh, terribly, uh, terribly boring to wait like that. Um, I see Samar asks uh, if there is any new news on uh, Divi update uh, that they haven't received. Y'all haven't received any in a while. Um, there is. Some good, I'm trying to think on how to phrase this. Uh, there is some good news coming out very soon. I'm hoping it's next week uh, about uh, about some cool stuff for you. Um, I don't know about uh, feature updates whenever they, uh, 
whenever they're coming out. I haven't heard a timeline on any of those, but I know that uh, the next couple of weeks are going to have some really cool, uh, really, really cool news and uh, things for you to look forward to. So keep, uh, so keep that in mind. Keep stay tuned and uh, check your email, check the blog, check the Facebook page, all the, all the stuff, uh, and you'll see some cool stuff over the next few weeks. Uh, that said, um, I see Miss V or MSV uh, looking at a life at midnight. And it's just that is that is just I can't remember. I honestly, you know, cannot remember the last time I was up uh, to midnight. So uh, so I appreciate you uh, you being much more of a night owl than I am to watch. Um, and Uncle Social uh, says he saw the second link, which is under the news section, involves Facebook buying Giphy, uh, which I will get to. Uh, that was announced today. Uh, but he said his face is turning red and the air is turning <laughs> blue. He's furious. His blood is boiling and spont spontaneously birthed a stomach ulcer. And uh, that uh, that is the reaction I expected out of you. Uh, and that is the that is the reaction that a lot of the internet has had. So we'll get to that in just a few. Um, that said, I want to move into the very first thing before we get into the Facebook and Giphy acquisition. Uh, I want to uh, point out the Get Ellipsis article, the very first one under news, that is uh, WordPress searches are up 52% in the last month. Just for WordPress and related stuff that you can look and see that they are trending 52% higher than they were the uh, the previous month. And that is a lot. Let that sit with you for a second. 52% up. Now, that is a huge surge for uh, for something as large as WordPress and as much uh, as much space as it gets in uh, search engines already. So a 52% is, is massive. Um they looked at 310 WordPress and WooCommerce keywords to get this, removed the extreme outliers, and it gave representative data. Uh, it's huge. Like, I can't speak of how huge that is. And I know a lot of WordPress companies have seen a similar increase in uh, searches, new users, things like that for themselves, and traffic uh, coming in since we got the since we got the uh, lockdown orders around most of the world. Now, the reason that I've put this in the news section is not only because I think that you need to know that, because that's a good way to gauge where you stand in the both the rankings and what you can do to push your sites forward and your business forward and get uh, get the kind of, get your chunk of that traffic really. Um, but what they do is they break it down a little bit further, uh, where it's uh, they're talking about the cost per click see, uh, keywords that uh, generally um, that over 12 months it's been up for about 85 uh, percent. They're looking at uh, two dollar. Uh, plus CBC words are up uh, 72 over the last 12 months. And then $5 ones, the really, really hard competitive ones, are up a little bit by 20% over the last year. Um, and it's safe to say they say that, uh, safe to say they say uh, that a 20% increase in searches uh, has a high purchase intent. So when you get, especially when you get into those higher, uh, when you get into those higher rankings and the higher CPCs. But what does this actually mean for sales? And that's what I wanted to point out for y'all, that uh, as you scroll down, it talks specifically about, there's a headline that says, what does this mean for sales? And they have a graph that they've looked at uh, that was put out by Freemius, oh, excuse me, um, that free plugin downloads during January, February, and March are up. That March had a 26% increase over last year's uh, to see the uh, for free plugin downloads. But this year also during March, uh, when we first started this, they looked at and there was a 13% drop in paid plugins. So there was a massive increase in people starting up and using the free stuff, uh, but a drop in people actually paying for it. And that's what we should expect right now at the beginning of the pandemic when we're, well, at, back then at the beginning of the pandemic, when we're final, first starting to get locked down and businesses are closing, of course, there is going to be a drop in revenue. People are, are freezing holding and they're not going to be paying for the, the big stuff. And new people who are having to transition to the online uh, community 
are actually going to be looking for the most cost effective and free DIY ways to do it. So of course, free plugins, free themes are going to get that increase. Um, but what they're talking about here is that you have to look at the search intent for these people and that as they, uh, you know, how is your sales funnel done? Uh, what are you offering people? Do you have free services? Do you offer free estimates? Uh, how are you coming up? And what specifically do you offer your clients or your customers? That's really the big thing because they put out uh, that the the crux of it, the, the number one thing that you need to pay attention to here is do you provide a necessity, I don't know why this is me pointing out, a necessity or a luxury? Like those are the two things that you really need to think about, like for what went up and went down during the uh, beginning of the, the lockdowns, like do they need to buy your product or would it be nice to have your product? Do they need to pay for your services or would it be nice to pay for your services? And that's really where you get into the nuance of this like 52% jump, the 85% increase in, uh, and paid, uh, well in, in just general traffic like that. And they talk about how, um, if you're set up to, uh, Let's see, this is the way they put it. Um, what happens next? And they don't think, and I, I agree, that things are going to go back to normal. Uh, that we're looking at what is the beginning of a transition into a new normal. And like I've said before, that we need to really think about the pivot points that we can use to kind of uh, steal ourselves and position ourselves in that new normal. Um, but he says here uh, that... Uh, uh, they say here that uh, if you have set up your free WordPress website talking about somebody else, then you're going to see the benefit from that from years to come. Your website will be an ever more important part of your business, at which point you're going to invest in functionality. Right now, people are fine using those free services, those free plugins. Give them some time. I've mentioned this about Gutenberg. I've mentioned this before about people who uh, you're giving uh, basic websites to that you set up a five-page website and uh, let them go for minimal cost. They will come back once it's run its course, and that's what they're talking about here. We're going to have over a year, uh, the conclusion that they come to looking through all of this, is that we're going to have a year plus of digital transformation and uh, that we're going to have, uh, that, that that is taken, almost that that's going to be what we can expect, that we're going to see people doing this, and the changes in trends are, we have no idea what they're going to be. But we know that WordPress is big, we know that WordPress is going to uh, continue to grow, because in one month, uh, we saw what, uh, from 52% increase, uh, which over the last eight, you know, other than uh, that one month, there was an 85% increase in the previous year. So it's a it's a spike for sure, but people's buying habits are going to change. And as they get through with these free stuff, these free things, uh, as they get through with the DIY stuff, they're going to be coming to you to make sure that they uh, can, they get the best functionality and can serve their customers the best that they can. I'm saying this so that you can prep that. Uh, make sure that you're ready for that. Make sure that over the next couple of months that you are ready for people who are okay and solid and used to doing this now coming to you to get something better and make sure that you have the, the menu, the, the, the list of services that they are going to need to be able to provide that because we're seeing the bump already. Uh, make sure that you're providing something that they need versus something that they may actually just like. Um, that's something that you uh, can truly improve their uh, their business as opposed to something that only, uh, only has the trappings of it. Just make sure that you make yourself indispensable to them. And that's really what this is about. So I wanted to point out that to you with the searches being up 52% already, uh, that we're, we're in for a good year. That uh, that the ter that that the year as a whole <laughs> is really terrible. But as an industry, we can really see uh, a good year coming out of this if we're able to take advantage of it and uh, really help people out transitioning to what their new normal is going to be by really reaching out and showing them what our normal is. Um, now, 
uh, to move. Oh, excuse me. I see some. Uh, I see some comments. I appreciate that, uh, Vicas, and hello, Del Salvador, uh, Luis. Um, I uh, want to point out this Facebook thing that Uncle Social is raging on. I almost actually tweeted you, Uncle Social, before I went live to prep you for this, uh, honestly, because I knew um, I knew that you were going to uh, to do this. Uh, I knew that you were going to go insane. And no, it is not GIFs or Jiffy. It is Giffy and, and GIFs. Um, but I, I really did. I wanted to prepare you for this in particular. But this is crazy. Facebook has uh, said today that they have announced today that they are acquiring the startup Giphy uh, for $400 million. That uh, the last time the company was valued, they had a valuation of $600 million. So they're coming in lower than uh, what their normal, what their actual valuation is. But when Facebook wants to give you $400 million, you take it. Um, but uh, they're supposed to right now they're positioned to be a part of Instagram. So whatever you use Giphy for, uh, they're going to be an Instagram partner now. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work because I'm honestly not that good at Instagram. So I don't understand how a lot of the uh, the newer stuff works. But um, they are really uh, going to be independent as much as they can be for the time being. So nothing is going to change. Like I wanted to point out to y'all right now, if you're like me who use it constantly on uh, different platforms, I mean Slack constantly, I slash Giphy everything. And that's what, that's the uh, app I use in iMessage. That's what I'm using on Twitter. Uh, so I see this and I'm like, everything's going to change. This is, this is, this is how I GIF uh, or this is how I GIF for you. Um, but it's, it's insane to me that this is, this is happening. So I read a little bit more into it. Uh, there's some stuff on uh, Facebook that you can read. Uh, read different threads from uh, various reporters and things like that. Axios is the one uh, I've linked to that was the very first uh, one who broke the story, and uh, they actually posted on their company blog uh, since I actually had uh, first seen this uh, this article today. The issue people are having here, and this is where why I wanted to point it out to y'all, because you build websites, you may be using plugins that do this. Uh, if you try to, to handle, I don't know how this is going to affect CCPA and GDPR, but the big thing that I've seen people talking about is that if you look at Giphy's terms, they're not only selling the branding and company, they're selling the API as well. So they're selling their API for Facebook to, to include in its developer suite. What that means is that Facebook now has reach that amount of reach. They already have uh, reach outside of Facebook. Don't get me wrong. They already have their, their, their little tendrils everywhere on the internet. And these are tendrils apparently. But what they do now is that every platform you use Giphy for or have used Giphy for. Facebook has that data now. This is the part that, that's going to make Uncle Social's head explode. Um, this is the part that, that really stinks. For, for privacy concerns, is that the data that comes from Giphy's API no longer goes to Giphy that goes to Facebook because they own it. That includes historical data. So your Twitter... Uh, usage, your Slack usage, your iMessage usage, anything like that are uh, going to be able to be aggregated into Facebook uh, to be able to better do the ads and different algorithms like that. Um, it is getting a lot of blowback for from, uh, from people right now because of uh, it transferring historical data and that uh, they might use Twitter as opposed to Facebook to avoid this kind of thing. But that's what the integrated Facebook, that's what the integrated uh, GIF app on Twitter is. If you just press, <coughs> excuse me, if you just press the GIF button on uh, Twitter, then you see it coming from Giphy. Um, it's, going to be a nightmare and uncle social may put it the best in the youtube chat right now if every bloody every bloody gif is going to be a facebook pixel and i already block them with ghostery and now i have to block cloud hosted gifs too and three angry emojis 
careful. Uh, but uh, but for real, like that's that's the fear is uh, if you're worried about that privacy concern, how is this going to happen? How I don't know how. First of all, how Giphy actually translates and gets and aggregates the user data. I've not dug in that far. But uh, this is something for y'all who deal with GDPR every day uh, and have plugins that you may use or different kinds of communications, content that you create, uh, whatever it is, this has a privacy concern specifically because of the way that GIFs can be embedded with stuff. Just be aware of it. Just be aware that there's tracking there now, that there already has been tracking. Don't don't let me, let me put that aside. Givy's already tracking our data. But now people who are trying to specifically update or specifically avoid Facebook are now going to have their uh, are now going to have their um, information funnel back through there regardless of platform, and that's where people are having an issue, which. Uh, brings it into what Axios is also saying, um, but Facebook is, uh, and this is a quote, Facebook is facing enormous blowback over its previous acquisitions, which means that this deal, however small by comparison uh, in terms of money and, and technology, is likely to face a lot of antitrust scrutiny by regulators. The tech giant is currently under investigation by federal and state lawmakers for antitrust, um, which basically means that uh, they're trying to consolidate everything and uh, people are worried about them becoming a monopoly and having everything, which is what the privacy stuff on this one bugs me about, that they're actually reaching into, well, they're not reaching into, they're pulling back uh, data from Twitter and Slack and other platforms, uh, which means that you can't really avoid them. And they, uh, they really, there's issues there. Um, I see Capsule J says it's a fancy chair. Uh, my chair is awesome. It is a bargain basement $100. Uh, that's not bargain basement, but it is in terms of gaming chairs uh, on Amazon. It was an off-brand uh, cheap one, but I love it a bunch. Um, but yeah, so if you're concerned about Facebook uh, owning everything, uh, they are look getting have lots of antitrust lawsuits right now. But it's uh, it's going to be something with with the with the Giphy tracking pixels and uh, all of that with the API coming through, who knows, but it was announced today. It's a little bit nuts. And I think that, uh, I think that you should all be aware of it. Um, I see that there's been a couple of questions here about uh, new Divi updates. Um, uh, when, and uh, what about them? I don't know. Uh, we have some really cool news coming up. Uh, I know of two announcements that should, let's cross our fingers, that should be coming out in the next month. Uh, hopefully sooner than that, but that's the uh, that's the kind of window that I know about. We're hoping sooner than that. Um, I'm hoping next week for one of them. Again, crossing my fingers on that, no promises. But uh, it's really good news. Uh, it's not quite feature updates, but it's cool stuff. So I can't wait for those. I'm really, really, really excited about them and think that, uh, that y'all will uh, really like those. In terms of feature, updates i'm not sure where the uh the roadmap is i'm not sure where the um not sure exactly where excuse me uh the uh the dev team is on those but i know that the last i heard that uh our facebook not facebook oh my goodness that our speed improvements are uh, are coming that those are being worked on a lot and the um uh, WooCommerce ones were going to be among the next ones to come out. I haven't seen anything about whether or not that's still the case, but that was the last I was told. Uh, but like I said, I'm super excited about some stuff that I know of that's on deck. So y'all, uh, y'all, y'all are going to be, y'all are, y'all are in good hands. I, I, I'm excited to see uh, how y'all react to some stuff. Now I see 147 dev also, uh, recommends, uh, uh, ghostery as a, uh, as a privacy blocker. I'm going to have to look that one up that I've seen you mention that one, uncle social. And I don't know, I don't know it at all. Um, so, uh, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that I definitely will be uh, looking into for personal use. Um, if one of those updates is Giphy, uh, now has in, uh, Divi now has Giphy inter- integration built in the lockdown be damned. I'm coming for you, Mr. Keaton. I, do not think that's the case. If that is, that one has not been uh, been told to me at all. Um, but uh, I don't know. I like gifts. Uh, maybe we'd use Tinder if we did that. Um, but 
that's one thing that uh, that would be uh, that I do not think is going to be the case. Um, but yeah, so so I knew that was going to be a big uh, big thing, and for some reason that reminded me. Um, I know that I think it was MB who asked. I'm not a hundred percent who had asked about a Discord. Uh, earlier a uh, couple of times in the past. Uh, we talked about that this week and found out that while there is no official one, we don't have plans for an official Discord, uh, that the fine folks over at uh, slash r slash divi on Reddit have actually put up a Discord, that there is a uh, divi Discord that has a good community on it uh, that uh, I joined. I know Donietta's in there. And uh, she told me about it, so uh, so props to Donietta for letting me know about it because I'm so not a redditor, I completely missed it. But r slash divi uh, put up a, a community Discord that you can join uh, over that way. So I'm uh, go go there. That will uh, for the moment be. Uh, where I think uh, Discord uh, will go because uh, that's uh, we like to support the community. So make sure that you join that. It's really cool. We have our Facebook group and everything as well uh, if you do uh, Facebook. So uh, Uncle Social, you can go join the uh, r slash Discord Reddit uh, without fear there. Uh, and it just depends on the server and what bots they have, whether you can avoid Giphy. Um, I see that Naki asked, uh, tell us the Discord name. Um, I will, uh, look, I think it's just called Divi. Like that is, uh, I know you can find the link on, uh, r slash discord or r slash Divi on, uh, yeah, it's just called Divi. Uh, let me see. And I'm going to get my invite link, uh, edit invite link. Uh, I was getting an invite link to that, y'all. Uh, it is now in the uh, comments. I'm going to uh, paste that into Facebook and YouTube here. Uh, but that is a... Uh, y'all can do that one. That one's hosted by... Well, well, well run and moderated by the r slash Divi folks. Uh, so it is a really cool. Not official. Let me put that one. Uh, let me say that. Not, the, not official in any way. That is a community uh, forum. But it's pretty cool. So I did want to point that out to y'all uh, that uh, that I found out about this week thanks to Donietta. So uh, so it's really cool. I also subscribe to the uh, to the Divi Reddit. So maybe I'll see some stuff on there now uh, for in when I'm on there looking for Animal Crossing stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, the next thing I've put on news is one that I just wanted to share. Uh, there is a WordPress contributor, uh, Andy Fragan. I'm going to mispronounce his name like I do everyone else's. Uh, but WP Tavern put an, an article up, and they have an interview with him, about uh, him sharing his experience as a trauma surgeon during this pandemic. Uh, he uh, contributes, makes plugins, works on uh, site health stuff. Uh, for WordPress core, he's contributed a great deal, uh, but also his day job is an acute trauma surgeon. So uh, that kind of blows my mind that someone can be that talented. Uh, and so y'all should definitely check that out, uh, support him and uh, give him thanks for uh, being out there on the front lines. That's of WordPress and of uh, saving lives. So, uh, so, so that's fantastic. I wanted to point that out for sure. And uh, then there was also another editorial on uh, WP Tavern that I saw that this was actually linked in uh, Slack the other day that I saw um, called uh, where Gutenberg went wrong uh, talking about, and it's called theme developer edition. And it's a good breakdown of what a lot of y'all have said about Gutenberg. Uh, and uh, because by the end of the year, we're looking at WordPress having site-wide editing with Gutenberg. That we're looking at the block editor being applied to headers, footers, widget areas, as well as the content area. So this is looking at it uh, from a theme developer's standpoint. Uh, that if you do a lot of theme customization, if you work with Divi a lot doing full theme customization, if you dig in and make child themes, that kind of stuff, as opposed to just using the uh, the theme builder, which is what I do. I don't do anything but the theme builder now. Um, but, but if you do dig into the code, read this because it's got a really interesting uh, perspective on just the kinds of things that Gutenberg impacts and uh, what we're going to have to do as a community to... Uh, to, to really integrate Gutenberg into the entire uh, ecosystem because they had a really interesting stat in here. If I can uh, find where it was, 
Um, give me just one second to find it. Um, that uh, they talk about the the block enabled themes on there. That 2020 is great. That um, that 2020 is a great theme, but not everybody wants to use 2020. Um, and that's what he's saying. Uh, but he says that the reality is that there are only 132 themes out of 7,455 active ones on the theme repository that list block editor styles as a feature on the official repository. Now, that's not saying that there aren't premium ones out there that aren't, but of the, uh, of the 7,000 that are out there, only 100 of them have block it, uh, feature block editor styles as one of the main things that they work on. It's um, that uh, it's, it's just, it brings up really good points. Like it's something that we all need to think about. And William brings up a good point on YouTube. You know, he says uh, as a theme dev, I'm struggling, struggling to stay up to date with Gutenberg. And I can't even imagine, honestly, like just seeing from our perspective, uh, from my perspective on the content team, uh, looking at, at Gutenberg news as it comes out, looking at the uh, block editor as it uh, it is being integrated into core, trying to keep up with Gutenberg, uh, the beta plugin, and as since it was... Uh, announced years ago in that first beta release um, on top of seeing how our dev team has reacted to uh, to Gutenberg and the way that our Divi layout block works and just integrating everything together. I can't imagine, William, uh, the stuff that uh, it just kind of... Uh, kind of just threw up like confetti and expects you to uh, piece together. And that's what he's talking about in here. Uh, the first comment on it is, um, it's an infuriating car crash um, and says, you know, the backend interface is still in huge amounts of flux, uh, major drag and drop insertion issues, da, 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 da. Um, and it's true that the, uh, it's, it's hard to keep up with. In, okay, so this is, this is something I was working on the other day. I was working on an article where I had to take screenshots of different of the block editor. I was using it for a uh, for a tutorial. So I have two computers here, and this is this is just to go what you were saying about keeping up with Gutenberg. So I have two computers. I have the Mac laptop that I'm streaming on right now with my monitor here, and I have my desktop over here that I work on. And a lot of times I'll have something open on here and here. Uh, so that I can do two different things without getting the, the wires crossed, uh, without crossing the streams for uh, Ghostbusters fans. And I was on two different websites that I, I run trying to get these tutorial screenshots. Apparently, one was still running the Gutenberg plugin. One was running the Gutenberg-based uh, block editor that is in uh, WordPress. The interface that was showing up in the screenshots that I was getting from one to the other with the two, with the two different things had a completely different, completely different UI to them. Like the colors, everything had changed between uh, whatever version I was running there. And I thought they were the same uh, I, because that's what I'm saying here. I thought I'd updated both of them. They were different on what I was doing. So I had to go back on one of them and fix it where that they were all consistent. I just chose one over the other. Uh, Uncle Social, sorry, I had to cross the streams. Um, but, uh, but it was one of those things where just as a writer, as a content creator, it's like, oh, here's something that I can do in Gutenberg fairly easily. It's like, what? What? Why? Is, why? Is, why? 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 So as a, as a theme dev in there, I totally get it. Like I, I can, well, I can appreciate your struggle because I saw it on a very, very small scale uh, on that one. So it's, it has to be frustrating. Uh, and this is just a really interesting piece about that, thinking about where we can go from here uh, as we move through WordPress 5.5 at the end of the year. That uh, 5.4 is coming out relatively soon. I think it was a June date that they uh, had uh, set for the, for the uh, 5.4 release. And if I'm not wrong, I'm thinking, I may be wrong that they're thinking of a November release for 5.5. Not sure about that one, but I'm thinking that's what's in the back of my mind. Um, so we're going to have site-wide capabilities by the end of the year if everything follows the plan. 
and people like you, William, are going to be the ones paying the price. Uh, but it's also going to be up to people like you and the rest of the Divi community here to show how blocks and modules can be used all over a website. That you can use anywhere a block goes, you can insert a Divi layout. So as they do this, you can both use the theme builder and the block editor to the absolute utmost of their potential. Like if you have to use a block for something on one site, you can still use a Divi layout for a particular module in there. Like it's, I do that all the time. Like I love it. Um, but it's going to be an interesting thing to keep up with. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that y'all saw this, especially those of you who are in theme dev and do a lot more uh, than like I do uh, with the with the uh, the theme builder and block editor and stuff. Um, it's gonna be interesting this year. I'm, I'm really interested to see how all of the theme builders like Divi uh, react to it. Like it's gonna be interesting to see how Brizzy and Oxygen and Beaver Builder and everything react to the site-wide editing. Uh, because I mean, Divi is set up right now as the theme builder, which is good. I know Elementor has a theme builder um, and I'm not terribly familiar with a lot of the others, but as the base themes start becoming more block heavy and block ready as opposed to, uh, to full on templates, I'm, I'm interested to see how they react and how the market actually fragments a little bit uh, to differentiate even more between, uh, like William said, Divi's ahead of the game with block light builders right now for sure. And I agree. I'm really interested to see how things are going to shape up uh, and people are going to uh, really stand out when this happens by the end of the year. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting uh, next few months. So so I appreciate uh, all y'all's work to uh, get us there <laughs> so that I can sit on the sidelines and watch. Uh, but I thought it was neat. I thought that was cool. Um, I saw that Nakia joined the uh, the Discord. I'll see you there. Uh, hopefully some of the others did as well. It's a uh, It seems like a really interesting place so far. Um, and then Uncle Social brings up a good point regarding Gutenberg as well. Um, who will integrate WooCommerce in a complete and useful way first, theme builders or Gutenberg? Now, that is the question of the uh, hour. Because, I mean, I know we have some limits on uh, the theme builder stuff. That's why we're building, at last, at last count, 17... WooCommerce modules coming in uh, the uh, second round, uh, but it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that really works out. Um, as someone who doesn't use WooCommerce beyond the basics and doesn't do a lot of really in-depth stuff and never has, I'm interested to see uh, see how they all play out uh, as well. And uh, Jay asks uh, on YouTube, uh, where are you guys working on allowing us uh, to fully resize rows and columns? Um, I'm trying to think, uh, I'm not ignoring you, Jay. I'm thinking, um, I don't know. Uh, the main one that I know in terms of resizing columns and theme or, uh, and rows is the viewport adapt at I can't say the word update, the viewport update where you're going to be able to allow breakpoints on, uh, on there to, uh, to let the rows and columns, uh, resize based on the breakpoints that you set, as opposed to the traditional tablet phone and desktop versions. Um, I haven't heard anything more. Uh, again, that's not saying that it's not there because that is not at all where I am, uh, where my head is, uh, literally, that's not where my eyes are uh, looking in Slack or GitHub or anything. Um, that's a, that's a good point because I also would like that. Uh, having this weekend working on a site, uh, this past weekend, I was just trying to get. All I wanted was for my gallery to have uh, to be able to resize it on mobile instead of being a, a two by three like this. I just wanted it to be smaller and uh, uh, like a three, what is it, six? I wanted it to be smaller. I wanted a smaller grid. I, I don't even remember numbers now, uh, but I couldn't get it to do that because of the, uh, because of the uh, things like that. Um, an easy way to drag and resize. Um, I'm pretty sure, don't hold me to it. Do not hold me to this. I will, I will come for you if you hold me to this. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's being worked on. Uh, I, I 
remember a conversation about it or I dreamed about a conversation about it. Um, that is uh, something I'm fairly certain that, uh, that I heard about a few months ago. I do not know where that would be. Um, that is the absolute uh, base that I know. Like I said, it has been, I've heard about that being talked about one time and that is very far away from where I, I sit. So uh, drag to resize would be great. Um, I do not know where that sits right now. I know, like I said, I'd heard it talked about, don't know where it is at all. Um, that I don't know if that was just brainstorming. So like I said, don't hold me to it, but I know that that is in their minds. Let me put it that way. Um, because I don't know where the roadmap is sitting three months from now, much less, uh, I know the things that are coming out in like two or three weeks. So, um, and then, uh, for custom uploads on social icons, um, I did a, an article on, well, custom uploads. Let me, uh, let me, uh, change that. We have, uh, I don't know on that one. The, uh, the way that I've always done that is uh, through the image module or a blurb module. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we need that, and I don't think there's a way to do that. I haven't heard about it. The last I heard about anything regarding that was just adding a couple to the defaults, and um, I don't know about uh, upload features on those. Um, Chris says, uh, the last time I had a chance to watch your weekly wound up, I suggested having image modules pull uh, pull alt tags and tiles in the media library. The update around April 25th included that feature. Awesome. I'm glad that it did. I did actually go to the, the, uh, dev team about that one looking, uh, and, uh, let them know that that was not happening. Um, uh, I try to do that with a lot of uh, with a lot of this stuff, but I know specifically I remember having that conversation. So, Chris, I'm very glad that that came through uh, through for you. Um, and I'm good to know. I'm glad to know that now because there is a site that I've been doing a lot of. Uh, sorry, I got distracted by the comments. <laughs> um, that I. Uh, I've been doing a lot of image pulling like that. And uh, one of the things that my SEO uh, plugin was telling me, I'd been using the WP, uh, WPMU dev one that I can't remember the name of right now. Smart crawl, is that it? Uh, it was telling me that I needed alt attributes on certain images. So if that's the case, uh, I'm going to make sure that they're there. They, they simply exist on those images now instead of having to go back and do everything. Like That's awesome. Thank you for letting me know that because I did not pay attention <laughs> to that release. Um, and then uh, Video Superhero says Divi Booster is pretty nice and affordable for social icons. I actually had it. Um, I may still have a license to it, actually. Uh, I used it for social icons for a little while. Um, and I've never used uh, uh, Lordicon. I've never used that one at all. Um, and video, I've actually had really good luck out of these new ones. I've on the sites that I've, uh, I've been using these on, I've been really, really happy with them. Um, uh, not dug in a lot, but, uh, uh, I've had really cross, like again, cross my fingers. I had really, really good luck with, uh, smush and, uh, the site crawler, smart crawler. I can't remember the name of it, but I like, I like that one. So I like those so far. Um, played a little bit with Branda, but I don't really need it, but I've just played with it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so those, uh, that's, that's good to know. I really do, really do appreciate the, uh, uh, letting me know that, uh, Chris, sorry, sorry, my brain, uh, trying to follow too many comments at once. Too, I'm trying to think about too many things and trying to follow the comments at the same time. Um, and yeah, the, uh, I remember that video when they sunsetted a bunch of plugins, uh, that was terrible, like for users, but uh, I know that they open source those. And I think that a lot of them have a community around them, keeping them updated, at least to maintain functionality. Um, and then uh, Jay does say, but lots of plugins are not a really good solution for a lot of reasons. I tend to be one of the people who doesn't have the PHP tech, uh, tech technical expertise to, uh, to go in and fully do everything, like write my own stuff so I can edit and add other people's in. And when I can't find something for that, I have to go to a plugin. So I have a lot of plugins doing, uh, doing some stuff, but yeah, the, uh, I agree as whenever possible, I go and edit it using a child theme 
um, which again, allow me to tell you guys, use a child theme. I'll always use a child theme, um, which is actually one of the links on here. Let me find it. Um, it may be under resources. Yeah, the first one under resources, I know y'all have asked about this in the past. So uh, while I've got uh, got the time, I want to point this article out that Randy Brown, one of our uh, freelancers, wrote for Divi Cake and did a rundown of uh, Divi child themes and uh, when do you need one? Like, are they necessary? Which ones? Uh, which ones do you uh, do you want to use? How do you get them? That kind of thing. So if you're curious on whether your site needs a child theme, like if you would be best suited to be able to have one, check out the first link under uh, resources because I really liked that article. He pulls out the idea of the theme builder, which is something that I've, I've thought about in the past that y'all have mentioned, that if you do just theme builder stuff, it's saved. All the customizations are saved where when Divi updates, no customizations are overwritten, but it's when you start getting into to editing the files that you need one. So if you're uh, doing anything at all that is beyond just using Divi's UI, use a child theme. Uh, we we always suggest using a child theme. I use child themes even if I'm not doing uh, doing that much of anything or if anything, just to be able to keep my CSS files separate, uh, things like that. I'm, I don't want to say I'm old school about it, but I think I'm terrified of things breaking too badly that I can't recover it uh, because I take too many risks on uh, stupid things. So I've learned to cover my tracks. Uh, I guess that would be the way to put it. Uh, I see William Patton says, how many plugins are too many? One more than you need. It's true. I actually uh, uninstalled today uh, on a uh, site. I uninstalled two plugins when somebody told me that they that it wasn't running right uh went in uninstalled two that really weren't doing anything and it improved things so yeah uh, i'm gonna say two more <laughs> that you need get in on that one um and uh video says what camera do i use for the screencast it's fantastically clear uh awesome i'm glad to hear that uh this is the logitech uh, c922 webcam uh, it is, I want to say it's about $80, $90, uh, where it's a very, very affordable entry-level uh, webcam. It provides really, really good uh, video from what I've seen. Um, very, very accessible. It's just a USB. It's a plug-and-play. It has a mic built in that I don't use. I have the uh, Procaster here. Um, but uh, it goes through... Um, uh, I use OBS as software uh, to use. I actually haven't updated OBS in a while because it works. Uh, so I haven't uh, haven't played with that. But uh, and just the settings on there have it set to uh, uh, the 1080p is all I, I stream at. For a little while, I did it at 720 just to see, and then 1080 made a just didn't have any detriments to it. Uh, that is as high as the Logitech one goes, though. If you're looking for 4K. Uh, or well, 1080p or higher, uh, then you're not going to be, uh, then you're not going to have the uh, 4K capability or anything. Um, but you uh, you do get really good vid visuals out of it. I know that uh, it's, if I'm if I'm remembering right, it's also the same one that Donetta and Jason use on their streams. Um, I know that Matt and Mac have uh, much higher end cameras uh, than the rest of us being the uh, the video guys. Uh, and I'm dying to get one with uh, aperture control so that I can blur out the background like they do and make everything look really cool. Because that is the one thing I don't like about this is that I can't control uh, depth of field. Um, and, and Jay says, I know a lot of streamers, Capsule Jay says, I know a lot of streamers that use the same webcam and are very happy with it. Awesome. Uh, my wife actually did a grant uh, over the weekend uh, to uh, for a, a digital communications manager at her library. And uh, she uh, she asked me what all the stuff that I had that the people at, at Elegant Themes had used because of the quality of our videos. So I sent her the, uh, the, the camera that Matt told me to use, that he used. Uh, and then I sent her the, uh, the setup that I've got here because it really does, uh, really does work. Uh, it really does work pretty well. Uh, and apparently you guys do not want me to mess with that Spider-Man lamp. Man, I uh, if I do, I'll have to like wear the lampshade on my head because of uh, uh, don't want the uh, uh, don't want the uh, Spider-Man lamp to give that much uh, problem. And uh, Dave asked how much did you say the 922 was? Uh, it was about 
80 or 90 dollars when i got it there may be a c960 now if i'm remembering right that might be the uh the current one uh is that what Yeah, I think it's the C, there's a C920, there's a C920X, there's a C922 that I have, and then I think it's a C960 maybe um, that the uh, uh, sorry I blocked my mouth uh, that they were looking at as well. Um, but yeah, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Logitech C9s are are I've run the C920 and the C922. And I've had, I like the C922 a little bit better, uh, mainly because of the colors. Like I think uh, William had mentioned, yeah, uh, William mentioned it. The C922 had better color balance than the uh, C920. It seemed a little more washed out. Uh, sorry, uh, Samar, I'll, uh, one day that desktop, uh, that desktop will change. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, Look at this. I see that uh, a video says that it's out of stock everywhere. Um, look at the, uh, the, the, this one is also, I want to say about three years old. Um, I've been doing this since September of 2017. Uh, so it's two and a half years old. There's probably an update to it, which I think is the uh, C960, but it's somewhere around in there that you'll be able to find that family. Um, they're, they're good. They're good stuff. Uh, I'm, I hope that some of y'all have the, the good results with that as well, especially, you know, Jay talking about lots of streamers, uh, Capsule Jay talking about lots of streamers too. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, but yeah, J Capsule Jay says video conference equipment is a pretty hot commodity right now with so many people working from home. You know, I didn't even think about that. You know, of everything that, uh, that I've said about the pandemic, talking about all of the all the different uh, stuff that we can do. I never thought about actually getting hardware for it because in my mind, people who were coming to work from home and transitioning uh, and doing Zoom calls were using like the FaceTime camera on their uh, MacBooks or built-in webcams. It never even crossed my mind that people would actually be buying, you know, the higher quality stuff to actually do their do their work. Um, <laughs> webcams with new toilet rolls, invest, invest. Um, and uh, it's true. Uh, I did. That's what you should do. Just buy lots of webcams and then sell them on the black market. Um, I, I might <laughs> saying that I might have a C920 somewhere around here in a bag that I should uh, raffle <laughs> off to people and uh, and see what kind of different uh, <laughs> see what kind of different uh, uh, fights I can get people into. Uh, Jay says on another topic, uh, which is great. Thank you. Um, on an 8K or 4K monitor, my Divi website really doesn't look well. Uh, perhaps it's because all sizes and pixels. How can I change it? Uh, two things. Uh, there are two things that I would suggest that you do at this point if you're doing a 4K or an 8K monitor. Um, first of all is make sure that you don't use pixels nearly as much. Uh, like you said, it could be that they're in pixels. Um, change things to uh, relative uh relative units. So use for text, use EM and REM for uh, sections and heights and line heights and things like that. Use like VW or VH uh, for the uh, view width, view height. Uh, those will do better than uh, percentages, which tend to do the uh, percentages do based off of the container, whereas the uh, EMs, REMs, and, th and VH and VWs are based off of different units. The VH and VW for the viewport, as well as the, uh, the EM and REM for the default font size. Um, then if that, with that, uh, that should help adjust the, that should help adjust like maybe you having a very small uh, content area and just massive uh, white space outside, which I've had in the past uh, when I've done that, uh, set up a website when I first started doing this, really proud of it on my laptop. It was a 13 inch laptop. Uh, then I went to one of the, my wife's computer and looked at it, which was a giant iMac at the time. And it was like itty bitty content space. Uh, it was not, not good because I was doing it in pixels. Uh, that's when I learned about VW and VH. Um, do that and then anything that you can use as an SVG, 
use it as an SVG. Uh, those are going to be vector image files. They are uh, not going to pixelate or uh, skew as you rotate and uh, size them. Uh, you can also use uh, icon fonts that do that as well, as opposed to static images, which essentially are the same thing as uh, vector images. Um, you can, well, I mean, they're different. I understand that, y'all. I, I know, I know they're different, but they the same concept there in that they don't uh, they don't pixelate as you size them and skew them. Um, you also uh, want to do that and uh, make sure that as much as possible uh, you stick to relative units on it. Um, sometimes you might want to avoid having a max height or width. Uh, that has messed me up in the past. Um, I have I made the mistake on some site that uh, I had done all this great design work. I was really proud of it. And I opened it up on mobile and the and the little, and the content area was like this. Like on a mobile site, it was like just itty bitty. Uh, and I realized that I had been using max widths in percentages and it was not, it was not good. Uh, ruined everything. Uh, 147 dev points out uh, that EM is default at 16 PX and REM is relative to the parent. Uh, thank you. Thank you for explaining that uh, uh, down and being specific on that. Um, and as far as I know, Uncle Social, that is a CSS rule. That is a, uh, you're just using the units in uh, any browser or any theme should be the case. Um, and then uh, JVJ says, uh, I am mispronounced your name, I apologize. Uh, differentiating you from Capsule J. Uh, I sh not sure if you have noticed uh, SVG uses HTTP and not HTTPS in the coding. Yes. Um, SVGs are not secure. Oh, 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 oh. Hold up. Hold up before, 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 before anything happens. I'm going to end on this because I'm running out of time. But we have a... Uh, they do have HTTP in the coding. What you can do, though, is there are WordPress plugins, and we actually have a tutorial on the site on how to use uh, SVGs securely with WordPress. Um, there, there are ways it's not for some reason. And I think it's a really weird inclusion on uh, WordPress's part or exclusion, not to have this as part of core, but, uh, they don't use them because of that. Like they don't have that, that security layer. So what, uh, you need to do is either use a plugin that will let you support SVGs or, uh, there's coding that you can get into and deal with. But um, but check out the website, check out well, our website, the Elegant Themes blog, uh, and search for SVG and you'll see it. Um, you can also, uh, hopefully, uh, with that, uh, sorry, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Mueller, um, hopefully you can also use uh, WebP images. That's an image size that Google serves uh, that has higher resolution, not higher resolution, but uh, similar resolutions to uh, PNGs and JPEGs that uh, at much smaller size. And I've seen some stuff uh, letting you use gigantic, like 4K images uh, for about the size of a 1500 pixel uh PNG. So you can use WebPs as well and try to get some of that if you just go ahead and size up to that size of monitor and use CSS to scale down, uh, which is not the best practice, but possible for, for that particular uh, use case. Uh, WebPs are really good for that and SVGs, uh, relative units and things like that. Um, that is specifically why using PX is not a typically great idea. I know that we're working on moving into more relative units. I know that uh, that's a that's a dev team thing that's looking at the layout packs and things like that uh, and design team working on stuff like that as well that it's, it's again it's been talked about don't know where it's going but we're uh, working on uh, I know that that's something that everyone should be working on uh, is to move into uh, using relative units as often as possible. Um, and did you know you know just like I said, I was going to end on this. I didn't know until last week, and this is how crazy I am. I didn't know that LH was a, that there, and there was a line height CSS thing and a relative line height where I was messing with it. Like it just, I saw it and it was, uh, it was just like, mm. 
How did I miss that for like the last 22 years? Like I started doing HTML. Well, CSS, I guess, would be about the last 20-ish when I did that. But I've missed that there was a line height for 20 years. Never used it. Never one time did I pay attention to that. Like that's one of those things like where you just realize that you've, uh, you've completely missed something. It's like how in the world did I miss that? That's one of those for me. Line height. Who knew? Um, Y'all did. That is that is the answer to that question. Um, thank you guys for coming out. That is going to uh, to wrap me up today. There is a lot more in the description of this video that I did not get to. Uh, so make sure that you expand the video description. Make sure that you click through all of the links and uh, give those content creators the uh, traffic and the love so that we can keep doing this. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, and we couldn't do it without you. We really appreciate y'all stopping by. I hope that uh, everything goes okay. Uh, you being able to contact uh, uh, CRA, uh, Judy, I hope that the the uh, the stream has been uh, everything for y'all that you could ever want. Uh, we do this every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern right here, so make sure that you smash that like button, make sure that you ring the bell, and you tell YouTube and Facebook that you want to be notified whenever we go live. Outside of Friday at 3 when I go live, Jason or Donetta goes live on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, so that uh, going through a use case uh, with Divi showing you how to do something... If you want to learn how to use Divi, that is the best place to go. I'll learn more watching them do their use cases just to see how they use Divi than anything else. They are brilliant. And every Monday after we do a theme release uh, we or a feature release, we will have Mac going through uh, that release at... Five, no, 6 a.m. Eastern on here. So uh, check that out. Hopefully it won't be past midnight for some of you guys. Um, I hope that y'all stay safe. I really, really do. Uh, hunker down. Don't shake hands. Uh, hug your families uh, if they're in the same house with you. Otherwise, do not do that. But for real, stay safe, y'all. Take care of your loved ones. And I will see you next Friday at 3.